our studio this morning with Alfred Mtawali. He is the chairperson of the East Africa Tran in uh, Interpreters and uh, Translators Association. And just remind you that this week, from today to the 30th of this month, we shall be celebrating the International uh, Translation Day that was... Um, recognized by the United Nations, and uh, the theme for this year is promoting cultural heritage in changing times. Mr. Mtawali, how does this connect with the translation, technology, culture? Because well, that is the well, theme of this year. Yes, yes, promoting cultural heritage. Yeah, um, um, translation first brings, connect, connects nations, really, because you find it everywhere you go, and, and, and fosters peace as well. Because you find interpreters in war-torn countries like Afghanistan and they travel with the army and make sure communication takes, takes place, you see. And then you find it at, at, uh, on, even on drugs, the prescriptions, you find them translated as well, mm -hmm. you know. And then uh, if you come to technology, even now machines, the gadgets we use, the, the languages are true. You can use English or another, lang uh, another language the way you like. So it's all over the place. Mm -hmm. and, and it helps us, I can say, live better, communicate better. Mm -hmm. and, and, and our situation local here is not so good because there's still too much English than we need to have. Mm -hmm. We need to have both, really. If okay. I work in a bank, I should find, uh, thank you for not smoking. In Swahili as well, because mm -hmm. the assumption is everyone who goes to a bank mm -hmm. speaks English. Yeah. But maybe an, an uh, Awanjiku from the village needs to bank also mm -hmm. and needs to find that information in a language mm -hmm. she can understand. Okay. Yes. And what about culture? Because as much as we're celebrating this theme this year from today until the 30th, there's also the aspect of bringing in culture. Yes, yes. Language, language and culture. Language is part of culture, really. Because every community has a language. I speak, I speak my mother tongue, mm -hmm. which comes with a culture as well. So the way I use words is, is uh, tightly connected to my culture. Mm -hmm. And the phrases and the idioms we use. Mm -hmm. uh, if, if I come from like a, shore, a, a seashore line or whatever the coastline, you find even my vocabulary will be, will be based on that. Mm -hmm. The idioms will be based on that geographical location. Mm -hmm. So if a language, for instance, dies, then a culture also dies. So language and culture are interconnected mm -hmm. and, and they really go together. So, and that's why if I, I find an English text, I'll find the English culture there. Mm -hmm. And I remember one time I was working on an English text and then the, the writer was saying, and I went to Saddle, to, to Starbucks. Mm -hmm. and, and for my context here, I thought at first it's a place. Mm -hmm. You see, so I had to do a lot of research to determine, oh, this is a coffee shop in the US. Mm -hmm. So everything in that, in that writing was based on the American culture. So are you trying to say that when you're doing your translation or interpretation, so when culture comes in, you as a translator or as an interpreter, you also have to take into consideration some of the meanings of this word you're yes, using yes. based on someone's culture, on the culture. or let, community. Let me give you an example. If, if I'm uh, translating something to do with snow, for instance, and in my community we've never seen snow. So if I say, oh, you, you, you're so smart, that dress is as white as snow. So someone from my home village will not understand. Mm -hmm. So now in that case, I can substitute and use cotton mm -hmm. or milk. Mm -hmm. Because then in that, in that particular context, the, the phrase is used for comparison. Mm -hmm. So I can say, oh, your dress is as white as cotton mm -hmm. or milk. So now I've, I've, I've brought in the aspect of my own culture now, we, uh, based on what we, I know, and then now translate. Okay. So I cannot now carry over the culture from the source and then bring the same to my own culture. Mm -hmm. And then my people will read and say, this doesn't sound like our language. Mm -hmm. It sounds like a translation. Mm -hmm. but, but a good translation should not sound like a translation. Mm -hmm. It should sound like a native speaking. Okay. Yes. So how do you safeguard the quality of translation? Well, there are checks and balances. You, first of all, you have to study your own culture first and, and grammatical patterns of your language. Mm -hmm. The Lua will not have the subject, verb, object. They have it in another way. I'm Bantu. We have the subject, verb, object. Mm -hmm. Now I'm translating a text from English. Mm -hmm. So I need to, to really uh, put that into consideration, that my language behaves like this. My language has a, a way of 
connecting. Like I went to Mombasa. When I arrived in Mombasa, I took a matatu to Kisauni. Mm -hmm. When I arrived in Kisauni, you have to connect the discourse. Okay. Now English will not speak like that. They'll mm -hmm. just go in a straight line. Mm -hmm. So now my culture dictates on how I should even write the language mm -hmm. because we always connect back with what has just gone or mm -hmm. preceded, you see. Mm -hmm. So translation, you have really to know your culture. You cannot be, let's say I've lived away from the Swahili culture, for instance, and then I call myself an English Swahili, and then I have no idea what the Swahili culture is all about. Then my translations will not be very natural mm -hmm. and they'll not be clear and then the aspect of accuracy as well mm -hmm. so these two things have to be there okay so what are some of the common challenges that uh, translators and interpret interpreters face on a daily basis on a daily basis there can be terminology issues where you uh, an interpreter is in a conference and these terminologies are scientific so usually what happens, the, the client will provide materials ahead of time for research. And then the interpreter will do a lot of research for those terminologies. And then for translation as well, you find unknown terms. Mm -hmm. You see, in every language there are known ideas. For instance, my culture doesn't have ice cream. So how do I go about translating ice cream? Now I have to translate it and say ice cream. You see? Or oh, sometimes even we even blue band. We, mm -hmm. we don't have my culture didn't have blue band. Mm -hmm. You see, so when it came, we have just to call it the way it is. Mm. This is blue band. It's like what I hear Swahili people say, "Kutohoa luga." Kutohoa, that's transliteration. Okay. Yes. Exactly. So just say the way An it is. An idea that didn't exist in that particular culture, you can borrow or you can learn. You can get a word from another language, mm -hmm. and and languages do that every other time. Swahili has borrowed shule from German, Meza from Portuguese. Mm -hmm. and, and also, as we borrow, we also learn. Okay. We gave the English safari. Mm -hmm. See, that's from Swahili. Mm -hmm. So languages behave like that. And this, this is common for ideas that, that don't exist in that particular culture. Okay. So if I find an idea or, or even a geographical features that are not really found in my area, I have to look for ways mm -hmm. to go behind that and translate. Okay, so it means then translators and interpreters also need to learn an extra language. Just apart from English, Swahili, you also you have need... To, yes, you, you need to specialize and have a working language pair. So I how many languages? I work in uh, English, Swahili myself. Mm -hmm. That's my working language pair. Mm -hmm. But I've, I've also worked in, in English, Griyama, for many years. Mm -hmm. So how many languages can an interpreter or, 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 or a translator need to... For an African, since we are very multilingual, you can work in three. Mm -hmm. like, like for me, I can do English, Griyama. I can do English, Swahili, mm -hmm. you see. And, and there are those guys who will do even more than that, mm -hmm. you see. But usually it's recommended that you specialize in one language pair. Mm -hmm. And there are those guys who are in the country, like interpreters who work for, like in English French, mm -hmm. or English Portuguese, or English Spanish, or English Chinese. Mm -hmm. So you have to specialize and then look at your market. Mm -hmm. Where can I brand myself and get more engagement mm -hmm. and jobs? Okay, so once you do that, because I know like the sign language interpreters, yes. they are certified. Yes. It's meaning that they are recognized and it's, it's, it's more like they're respected. Yes. Is it the same with the interpreters and translators? Do we have certified interpreters and, yes, yes. and we translators? Yes, yes. We have certified sworn. But what we have done for association, when you join, we give you a certificate. And that really means we, we, we now recognize you as, as one of the highly professional translators. If you're not a member, for instance, then we don't really consider, even when there are jobs out there, we will not even recommend uh, you for those jobs. So how do you know, how do you know someone is, 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 is qualified to be given for you, for your association to give this person a certificate? <laughs> okay, we look for because experience. you talked about only 60, 60 yes, qualified in four yes. countries. Yes, yes. Yeah. And that's because we are also very new. We started in 2016, June. So about two years now. Mm -hmm. we, 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 we hope the membership will grow. But mm -hmm. what we do, we, we look for the CV, there's the aspect of training. There are those who've trained, there are Kenyans who've trained in Cameroon, for instance. Mm -hmm. There's a school there which is very good for interpreting and translation. Okay. And then we look for experience as well, mm -hmm. because you don't really, uh, you don't need to have studied translation okay. to be one. Okay. You can be a doctor 
and transition into medical translation mm -hmm. where you work with medical materials and stuff okay. or even lawyers okay. I know so many friends who are lawyers and, and they, they do translation okay thank you so much Alfred Mtawali talking to us about translation this year Kenya is celebrating the international translation uh, week from today until the 30th of this uh, week and the theme is promoting cultural heritage in changing times um, Alfred Mtawali is the chairperson of the East Africa Interpret Interpreters and the Translators Association. So from